Bonjour, my friends, family, and other creatures of the sea. Today we have a best of three between Dark here in the bottom left. Yes, Dragon Phoenix Gaming Dark. Perhaps Korea's greatest Zerg. And in the top right, we have Clem playing for Team Liquid. Perhaps Europe's best Terran. Um, depending on how highly you hate Hero, uh, rate Hero Marine, or how much you hate Hero Marine. If you really dislike Hero Marine, you're probably more likely to think that, that Clem is better. Um, I'm actually not entirely sure who I would rate higher. I feel like Clem tends to be higher level at his peaks, but I feel like he's also lower at his lows. Well, Hero Marine has a beautiful, consistent level where he's, he's basically always the same amount of scary. So if he's scary enough to beat you once, Hero Marine is going to be scary enough to beat you till the end of time. And that usually shows in the tournaments as well. And on top of that, Hero Marine got fourth place in last year's World Championship. So, yeah, makes a pretty decent case for himself being, a, at least in the past year, being a very solid, solid European player. European Terran. Also almost managed to actually take out Raynor in that semifinals, going up 2-0, of course. But... That's not what we're talking about here right now. We're talking about a Terran versus Zerg between Dark and Clem. A match that a lot of people care about a lot. Because it felt like for a while Clem was just destroying Zerg left, right and center. And then every now and again these Korean Zergs would come in. These Rogues, these Darks. And they would just completely blast him off of this world. Um, with, with cheeky Roach builds. With you know different types of all-ins or even just solid macro plane just kind of showing hey it is possible to beat clem now ever since then clem has you know changed up his style he's became a little bit more i want to say consistent against these like weird build orders um but he still seems to struggle a little bit with these uh with these pings so whenever you see clem versus dark and it's on an online event it's always going to be played either on west or on central now west for most Europeans, it's going to be somewhere between 180 and 210 ping. While Central is going to be somewhere between, I want to say, like 150 and 180. Something along those lines. So, relatively high ping. Like, it's a... Especially in the TVZ matchup. Like, these seconds really matter. Like, these milliseconds really matter. Um, anyone who has played any game with uh, more than 100, 110 ping uh, really knows what it's like. It, it, it sucks. But, nonetheless, we have an interesting uh, match here on our hands. Clem opening up with a... Ooh, would you look at that? I thought he was actually going to open up with a... With a Banshee here, because I saw the tech lab being constructed on that barracks. But instead, it's going to be a two-base Viking Marauder all-in. This is a build order that Bunny has been playing a lot, uh, with some great success. Last World Team League season, he actually managed to take out, I believe, five or six Zergs with the exact same build again and again and again. And that build was this specific one. I have to cut a couple of workers for it to get everything in the correct order, to get everything in the correct place. Armory will start now, followed up by a very fast medevacs triple marauders will come out and i believe we'll have either uh, six or eight hellions and they will turn into hellbats and it's extremely important for the zerg player a to have a lot of queens and b ideally you also want to have a couple of banelings or some type of roaches seven queens is a decent amount but i'm not so sure if it's going to be enough uh, especially uh, if there's not a whole lot of transfusers available on those queens and right now we actually have zero transfusers available on those queens so the matter of fact is about to pop out here we still don't have anything coming out for dark no bailing nest no ro roach war no nothing straight away going up to four gases on these three bases before taking a fourth hatchery and adding a couple of links in as well we see a spore constructing so some, some some safety here is being included in Dark's build order, but I'm still kind of afraid for him because here comes that Medivac boosting forward with the three Marauders in it. All Queens being pulled to the front immediately. Not a single transfuse is available. No, I like. There's one transfuse available. Medivac gets targeted down immediately. A very big loss here for Clem, which means that none of these Hellbats and Marauders will get healed anymore. First Queen just went down. Second Queen is about to fall as well. Marauder is connecting um, with some of these Queens, but good transfuses, good control on these Queens. And I do believe that Dark is just easily going to hold. Still has another transfuse le left. Is going to use it immediately here. As more and more links start streaming in. And this looks really, really bad for Clem. And extremely good here for Dark. I can't believe he managed to hold this easily with pure Queen Ling. I really thought you needed some type of Bane Links. 
I thought you needed some some type of like a secondary tech unit, just pure Link Queen. I didn't think was quite going to work, but um, I was wrong. And Dark was right. Oh no, Clem C just up straight away into a spore, losing his only unit that he had left for harassment purposes. Tried to rally some of these links or some of these Marines across the map as well. Helene is going to get taken out. Marines will die as well. Clem right now is in a world of trouble. Dark follows this up with a quick spire, saying, "Hey." You spend a lot of time, a lot of effort into building Hellions, into building Marauders. Your Marine count is going to be extremely low. So what happens if I just build 10, 9 Muras? Um, are you even going to have Stim and Combat ready? Will you have any turrets in position? And I don't think that Clem will be quite ready for the Muralist here. As this first game is looking extremely bad right now for the French Terran player. Fourth base on the way already for Dark. Third base has been set up for Clem and is producing SCVs. 1-1 one, one being researched as well on these Ebays as the double Evos have started here for Dark 2. So upgrade Dark isn't going to be too far behind even. He'll still be a little bit behind but not too far. Uh, when it comes to tech though he's going to be in a fantastic spot. Fourth base uh, and fifth base already coming up. We have a macro hatch in the main as well. So three hatches going down at the same time. And yeah this is just going to be 10 Muras. 10, 11 Muras. And that's a fantastic amount, honestly. That really is a fantastic amount. Yep, there we go. 11 Mutas in production. And we'll see the uh, upgrade start momentarily as well. I can only imagine. Five more barracks on the way for Clem. Just straight up going into 8 racks. Now, 8 racks actually is probably usually the hard counter against the Muralisk. Because Mutas aren't great at fighting. The real power of the Muralisk is in harassing, keeping the Terran at home... Clearing units, clearing SCVs that are that are popping out, but in a straight up fight, they're not actually that useful. So if you have 2,200 resources tied up in a unit that kind of you know gains something for you over time, you don't want to be fighting an all in. And in this case, the eight racks that Clem is playing definitely is going to be an all in. Only problem with it is that Clem is just so far behind. I'm not even quite sure if it's going to matter. On top of that, there's just nothing ready to deal with these Muras. So despite there being eight barracks of marine production, if you don't have any marines in the correct position, you don't have any turrets ready, you're just going to end up losing 15 workers before you can even do anything about it whatsoever. First 10 workers go down for pretty much free. Uh, the next 7, 8 might also end up falling here. No good split coming out of Clem. It's not going to quite get a Muralisk yet, but... Uh, we'll probably get one soon. Yep, first mute of this did just fall. As Dark is up 50 supply currently. And I don't think it matters how many barracks Clem currently has. He could have been on 12 barracks right now. Producing uh, 35 marines uh, per second. It, it doesn't really matter. Because Clem just doesn't have the money to produce. He doesn't have the income to produce. He's going to have to push with 1-1. One, one, and usually this type of 8 uh, racks you kind of want to focus, be focused around like 2-2 two, two timings. That's definitely not going to be the case here. Because, well, um, he just doesn't have the time for it. He can't, like, Dark is on freaking 80 workers right now. He, Dark is already tacking into an infestation pit, into a hive. Like, this game is completely, completely over. Here we go. Fight is going to be largely on creep as well. Decent splits out of clan, but it's simply just not going to be good enough. As Dark just moves forward and uh, forces clan back completely. Dark outmining his opponent in a huge way as well here. Final Marines are still alive. Decent enough control out of Clem, really. Uh, GG gets called as uh, Dark will end up winning this game with relative ease after holding off that initial Hellbat Marauder all-in. That brings us to game number two here. And I haven't really mentioned it yet, by the way, but we're actually playing on different maps as well. I'm not sure why I decided to not mention that at all. But uh, this is Lazarus Waste, and Lazarus Waste is interesting because I believe it has maps with, yeah... 10 mineral patches, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This one also has 10, I believe this one also has 10. So there's 6 bases on this map that have 10 mineral patches, and there's 8 bases that just have the regular 8 mineral patches. So that means that the... I'm not actually sure what that means. It, probably that these outsider bases, the more neutral bases, are going to be a little bit more important as they have more minerals there. Um, which should make the late game actually slightly more interesting. Isn't it a good concept, honestly, that the, the creator of Lazarus Waste thought of? Uh, this time around, we see Dark opening up with a very cheeky roach all in, and Clem is looking for to scout it. I'm not so sure if he's going to be capable of getting it. He knows the timing with the SCV when he needs to be there to see these roaches move out. But so far, yeah, he's not doing it quite yet. Oh, here we go. Checks the third base, doesn't see anything there. And just kind of ping-ponging in between the net and the third. 
Bing bong, ping pong, back and forth. Again and again. Ooh, he's gonna end up losing this SCV. No, he's not. He's gonna keep this SCV alive. That's actually kind of big. You just build a, a bunker on the high ground here, right? Surely that's just the plan. Yeah, beautiful stuff. Bunker on the high ground. You get a tech lap on the factory. You start producing marines immediately. And a little bit of a delay here on that orbital command. But he's still playing triple CC. This is a, a pretty significant investment coming out of dark. I don't really think it's going to work. Like, if this works, that is on clam. Because this is not a build order that is like a, a straight up build order. And you always get like a little bit of damage. You're always going to be just fine with it. No, this is significant investment coming out of dark. He needs to kill stuff with this. So if Clem micros this well, if Clem controls this well, he's going to be completely fine. I would have loved to see another depot go up a little bit early already. You know you're going to end up losing at least one depot here. Uh, maybe even two. That's a possibility. Cyclone is, well, a little bit over 75% uh, out right now. We'll have to wait and see what's going to happen with it. Is he going to go for the Cyclone here or for the Overlord here? I hope so, right? No, actually going to start with a Ravager. Not a huge fan of how Clem defended this so far. He's going to connect with that first Ravager. Never mind. I love the way he defended this. I didn't think he was going to get it. Dark too slow with the pullback. And as a result, ends up losing it. Ravager still being, mic being microed back as this Overlord is going to get taken out as well. Clem maybe has a little bit of a push in him as well at this point. Cyclone should be quicker than a Ravager. Um, but Clem doesn't want to risk it. And I actually respect that a lot. Rather than saying, hey... There is a pretty high chance that I'm going to get this Ravager for free. Clem says, what if there's links behind this with metabolic boost? I'll just lose my Cyclone and I'll probably lose the game. So instead, what he's doing right now, he's just moving back home. He's saying, okay, I'm going to add two more barracks. Maybe start a tank at some point in the future for some added safety as well. We have 12 links on the way already. And I think that Dark might be preparing for an actual... Well, I'm not sure if this is a link flood or if these are safety links against Hellions, but... Either way, I like this a lot for Clem. Clem has triple CC. He has a way faster third than his opponent. Selling the bunker, starting a starport right now. Uh, I think he's going to hit a fantastic timing with his stim, with his combat shield. And with some brilliant eco as well. Uh, currently only up to two gases, but it's going to be just fine. Uh, ten more links on the way. How many links are we going up to? We're going up to 14. No, we're going up to 24 links. Wow, that's a lot. That actually is a lot of links. This needs to deal some damage. If this doesn't deal damage, Dark is just completely dead. No, he's going to be even work account, but down three mules. Look at the income right now. 2,600 minerals against 1,700. No stim here, but the tank is in position. Target fire should have been on the Ravager there. Instead, splashed his own marines for a bit. But I think this was a single SCV that died. And a lot of links as well. This can't have been a very good trade for Dark. Dark probably initially built some links to try and deal with potential Hellions, then realized there were no Hellions. It was like, well, in that case, I'll probably just move across the map, try to deal some damage. That didn't work out. And now we're going to have to see how Dark will hold this follow-up as Clem taking a huge lead in the early game. Pretty much a reverse of that last game. Last game, Clem decided to be aggressive with a two-base all-in. This time, Dark decided to be aggressive with a two-base all-in into a two-and-a-half-base all-in, or two-and-a-half-base pressure. And he's paying the price for it, just like Clem did in that last game. Third base is going to be set up right now as the Marines move into position. Position. Uh, tank is being set up on the high ground. And six gases. Oh, 1-1 one, one road. Ah, this I like. This I like a lot, actually. I think this is a great call. The sad thing for uh, Dark is going to be that tanks uh, are still in production. Clem isn't going to swap into mines anytime soon. I think Clem is completely aware of what's going on here. And as a result, he's just going to play it really, really safe. We'll move across the map with the Marines the moment he gets the first two medifacts out. But we'll most likely continue tank production. And the moment you're equal supply against someone trying to mess out Roaches, that's usually a very good sign for the Terran. Most of the time, you're just going to be down because Roaches are so insanely cheap uh, and they're pretty supply heavy. So, yeah, supply is a good indicator of who's ahead in this type of scenario. And it's definitely Clem. On top of that, upgrades also just a little bit faster for our French Terran player. We have a single Ravager already on the way. Dark is aware of the fact that there's a third base. We have a bunker coming up as well here for Clem. Clem is actually going into an Adrax once more. So one thing to finish this fast, we'll need to throw down an armory at some point in the near future if he wants to continue these upgrades. He's actually moving out with a tank right now. I almost don't like that. Because this carries some risk. I much would prefer seeing some tanks at home and just a double marine drop. At least to scout what comp your opponent is playing with. 
maybe this marine is going to be capable of figuring it out. Okay, she's a very late forward pace here. She's probably a complete lack of drones. I don't think moving out here is something a lot of Terrans would do knowing this entire situation. I'm not calling it bad. I'm just saying it carries a bit of risk with it. Now, Clem is a player that does not mind a little bit of risk, but does need to be very, very careful here. Um, usually Roach Ravager is the ideal comp as well to hold these earlier tank pushes. Not necessarily ideal to hold the, the late game tank pushes like the 180 supply, but against 133, 140, 150 supply, I think Roach Ravager is actually the perfect composition to deal with this type of stuff, especially given the fact that Dark is so far behind. Like, Dark is basically all inning right now, and Clem is just taking the fight to Dark side of the map, and I think this might actually be a mistake here. Come the Ravagers, here come the Roaches. First piles are going to connect with the tanks. Every single tank is going to get taken out. Clem gets completely cleaned up here. Tank count completely reset, and I'm not so sure why he did this. I didn't want to call it a mistake before it all went to crap, but now that it all went to crap, I'm completely fine calling this a mistake. He was in a fantastic position, and by all means, he still is in a very playable position, but it should have been so much better with at least three more tanks here in the defense. Bunker's going to be targeted down immediately as Clem stims in. 15 marine production per cycle is absolutely bonkers here. Um, but I'm not so sure if it's it's going to be enough. Does he actually have reactors? He has reactors on everything. Look at that. Is this seven racks? This is seven racks. No, it's eight racks. Eight racks. So that's seven reactors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven reactors, one tech lab. Fifteen marine production at a time. So he's going to be capable of pushing out a lot of units at a very high pace. Has a 4cc on the way. Would love for him to take this base as it has more mineral patches allows you for uh, bigger saturation more income uh, meanwhile we have dark still trying to make this work i mean he doesn't really have a backup plan imagine how poor this would have been for dark if there had been three extra tanks once again clem is trying to move on the map this time perhaps i don't mind it quite as much because he does have a lot of marines still once again carry some risk some of these tanks are kind of on the same exact pixel which means that biles potentially could double hit them uh, marines moving forward though oh, there's just so many marines there's legitimately 66 marines here against dark oh no i don't think dark is quite ready for it so this is gonna continue moving forward one thing i would like to see here is some uh like one liberator or so for some extra harass being added on the side queen count is very low due to how the early game went and the fact that dark wanted to go for a 1-1 rochalin Oh, tank sieging up right now. One or two will get taken out by the Biles. Oh, not all of them connecting here. Tank in the far back stays alive. Tank in the front stays alive. As Clam absolutely walks over Dark after that initially failed attack. Just managed to get so many Marines out. And even without the 2-2 upgrade, seems to be completely fine in this situation. 97 army supply against 71. Um, there is still a tank in the back, second tank shows up as well at this point. 2-2 about to finish up for Clem. Slightly faster than his opponent's 2-2. So there's even going to be a timing here. Big scan, finding these uh, tunneling claw roaches that wanted to go for the tanks. Uh, that is not going to end up happening. A couple of workers have gone down, will transfer over to the far left side. But yeah, this is just a great situation right now for Clem. Would like to see another scan onto the high ground. Um, it's pretty obvious what's happening here. Yeah, there we go, very good scan. Uh, tunneling Claws is such a, an obvious little shadow animation that it's really difficult to miss it, honestly. And Clem spotted it. It's going to start a step forward to game number two and tie up this series here on Lazarus Waste. Game number three over here on the Royal Blood. A map which I honestly haven't seen so much of. I like the tile set. That's all I can say about now. Scores 1 1 in this series. Oh, what did your Reaper do here, Clem? You see that? A little uh, wrap around. It's not quite what you want because it actually delays your Reaper from arriving to the other side of the map. That's why you always want to rally your Reaper in a very specific order. Not many people know this, but wherever your rally point is set, that is where your unit will pop out. So if you were to put your rally point to the right side, your unit pops out on the right side. If you put your rally point to the top side, your unit pops out on the top side. And here, Clem. I think rallied it across the map immediately and then sometimes it pops out on like a weird side because the, the AI calculating what the quickest path is is quite often incorrect. I don't think it takes into account things like jumps, like it just sees the straight path that it needs to take. Um, so yeah, that wasn't exactly brilliant. Because this Reaper hasn't done anything yet. Shouldn't get anything done either against six links. Uh, the rule is that if you build six links in the early game you shouldn't lose a single one. and. 
Um, so far, honestly, Dark has been doing a good, a good job at that. Hasn't lost a single link quite yet. We have this creep tumor that was actually placed so close to the hatchery, it might as well have not been there. Almost feel like it actually would have been better to just wait for it until you feel a little more safe. Like, what is this? Spreading to the left side? Oh, I guess he's going to spread creep over here then next. The clam is never going to be capable of jumping on top of this creep tumor. That's actually kind of wild. I think this is where your first tumor could have been as well, by the way. This isn't like secor, second tumor to ter territory at all. Kind of weird, but whatever. Whatever. Um, this time around, most likely we are going to see a bench. We'll see the quick swap over here. Uh, second gas is mining already, just with two workers. I think that's a little bit of a mistake, but probably a mistake that Clem will fix momentarily. The first bench indeed is on the way here. Helene is going to be continuously pumped out. Um, how do you actually harass on a map like this? It's really difficult. Look how long this rotation is between the left side third, where there's also a ramp, and this right side. It's so easy to spot for an arc, so easy to make this defensive movement. So I really do like this map for Zerg in the early game. The question is, how good is it for Zerg in the later stages of the game? You have these high ground spots for tanks. You have um, high, high ground spots for tanks over here as well. This map is insane for Terran, I think. So many difficult positions that you'll need to fight. Uh, I don't quite see how Zerk is going to fight this uh, in a normal way. Second gas on the way. We could see a bailing nest or a road run being thrown down as we have eight tumors being spread simultaneously. Like that nine. That's, uh, yeah. Clem not doing a great job at the nine, the creeper. It is a really difficult map for it. I'll just admit to that immediately. It's just a hard map for harassment overall. Layer comes out here. Very fast layer once again out of dark. No bailing nest yet. Just fully relying on those seven queens to make things work for him and i think so far they're definitely making things work queen eight and nine also coming out but we do not have any spores yet wouldn't mind seeing a single spore as the first banshee is popping in right now spore on the way this banshee is going to get two kills because dar before dark gets to respond uh, almost gets a third as well there ali is moving in simultaneously towards the third base cloak uh, popping off in about 10 seconds from now but spores will be in time of course spore in the main spore in the natural and spore in the third so a spore in every base Ooh, dark gets the link scout in might be capable of clearing one of these marines as well yep loses two links for one marine and almost gets an sev but instead decides to run away with that uh, with that final link 57 workers against 48 i wonder if clem is going to go into eight wrecks again so far he's eight wrecked every single game in this series one time it worked out, the other time it didn't. But honestly, it could have worked out if he wasn't so far down. Here come the cars moving forward right now. All the queens, though, in position to deal with this. There's not a single queen. Typical dark moves here. Um, not a single queen is actually injecting right now in the main. There's no queens injecting in the natural. Although there's still some, some actually an inject going on there. So it's not the end of the world. Once again, queens being split up. As these Hellions looking for damage and not quite going to end up finding it. Here come Barracks 4 and 5 with the reactors as well. I'm really curious how Clem is going to follow this up. He's getting tanks, that's for sure. As uh, these Hellions still looking for damage. Banshee's actually helping out over here. And one more queen might end up falling versus these Banshees. No good transfusers coming in. 11 SEVs just went down with against this Ling Flood. This little Ling run by. Ooh, Dark is going in hard though. Uh, Stimpak not done yet. Lots of Marines are do end up dying here. I think Clem is in a world of trouble. Not just a world of trouble. I think he might actually be accidentally dead. Uh, centrifugal hooks is very late. But 16 workers just went down. These Hellions need to deal some real damage. If they don't do any real damage right now. I, I don't really see a proper way for Clem to get out of this. Yes, the fourth base for Dark is very late. Yes, he is required to build another hatchery in his main. Sure, he's not injecting any of the bases right now, which is actually really bad for him because he's already floating a decent chunk of money. He's just going to start floating more and more right now. He's trying to build more hatcheries. Look at that. 1k minerals in the bank and about 300 gas as well. Dark is struggling to spend his cash. Could perhaps start a couple of extra queens to try and get rid of it. Instead, it's just adding more and more hatcheries. Look at this. Four hatcheries going to be built here at the same time. That's 1,200 minerals invested into things that are not units. Despite killing 16 SEVs, Dark falling behind here in supply due to his poor macro. Honestly, not injecting these hatcheries, pulling all the queens forward the entire time. It, it sounds cool, but it's definitely costing him here a little bit. There's no centrifugal hooks either. Combat shield not quite done yet, but there is one, one already on Liquid Clam's units. And this has some real potential. Helbet's morphing in as well. I mean, there's just not that many units. There's, there really isn't. Look, 
900 a thousand mineral 500 gas float 1500 minerals that are floating on top of that 600 minerals in the main wasted 300 minerals on the left side wasted we're talking about a waste of about 2500 resources for the zerg player and it is showing here it is definitely showing this is not good. This is not good at all. Here comes a Link Bane run by. Is not going to be successful. Gets pushed back. Clem still up in supply in a pretty significant way. Both of these tanks will stay alive. Bane Link count is up to 17 right now. A couple more are going to finish up. I think this will actually need to come back home to deal with this push that uh, that Clem is doing right now. Because there's just simply not enough units here. Queens will take out a lot of the Hellbats. But a lot of Marines will stay alive. Um, queens are okay at fighting. Transfusers are running lower and lower, though. There is an SCV that could potentially repair some of these tanks, although that is not quite what is happening right now. 19 SCVs do end up going down dark. Equalizes the supply, but massively down in army supply, which is going to be a real issue here. Medifacts are starting to run low for Clam. Infestation Pit has finished up. Hive, of course, not on the way quite yet. Both players starting their plus two attack upgrade. Ought to see that out of a Zerg player. Majority of the time, they prefer getting Carapace first. This is a lot of Marines kind of overstimmed, but it's not going to matter as a bunch of these drones will end up dying. Can we get some target fire here on these Banes? No, we don't really, but it's not going to matter. There's just not enough links. There's not enough Bane links. There's not enough Zerg units altogether. SCVs have finished up repairing those two tanks as well. So they're going to be a little bit more uh, more tanky once again. As three SCVs are being produced at a time. Fort base hasn't started yet. SCVs transferring over to that third. Uh, worker count is pretty close. Dark still outmining his opponent. And uh, honestly still floating some cash. It's just it's sad to see. Uh, more drones could be transferred over as there's eight uh, oversaturating the main base for Dark currently. Hive as well as Carapace upgrade on the way, but Clem moving in with so many Marines, with a bunch of tanks, with more Medivacs coming in. Dark goes for a full out counter attack and is going to try and win this game, but I'm not really feeling it here for Dark, honestly. He's going to get a lot of workers once more as Clem did not leave anything at home uh, again. Plus two infantry weapons finishing up in a couple of seconds from now. 18 SCVs have gone down. Do we have... Oh my god. Natural's going to get broken as well here. All Dark needs to do right now is just hang on. This is an insane game. 30, 27, 25 workers against 64. But the army supply is 100 against 53. Bailing's not available. Morphing slightly too close. Drones being taken out. There's still an army on the bottom side as well. So many marines over here. WW gets called. As Clem wins this series in very unlikely fashion. After losing... 71 workers in a 10 minute game he still manages to win and a lot of that is due to honestly dark spore inject in this game floating a lot when it mattered having a lot of money invested in these extra hatcheries usually it doesn't seem to hurt him too much but this time around i think it was the direct reason as to why he lost this game just could not produce enough and that was very very painful and that my friends is going to be it for me today and for this series as Clam managed to win 2 to 1. Thanks all so much for watching and hopefully I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thank you and bye bye.